From the heights of fame to the depths of shame, the rise and fall of Dylan Dennis has everyone talking. From his controversial comments and actions on social media, to his highly publicized feuds with other celebrities, Dylan's roller coaster journey has captured the attention of the internet. But will he be able to bounce back and reclaim his place in the spotlight? Or is this the end of the road for the once considered prodigy athlete and influencer? Find out in our latest video on the rise and fall of Dylan Dennis. Welcome to Who Is? If you've ever wondered, we've got you covered. Our channel talks about the rise and fall of everybody's favorite influencers and internet personalities, making their rise to fame and their overall stories on what has happened since. This is the epic and crazy, if you would call it that, story of everyone's favorite athlete. Dylan! The infamous internet troll Dylan Dennis was born on August 22, 1993 in Morristown, New Jersey. Dylan's experience as a troll dates back to his mischievous days at Brooklyn Middle School, where he proudly holds the record for the most write-ups in his school's history. He's always had a thing for trouble as he would allegedly get involved with street fights a lot as a teen. Like when you're not fighting and you're just sitting inside with an injury, like you, you want to be back in the action, you know? So I like, I like getting out there and kind of like, it kind of gives me a drill and rush, like I'm fighting. And as a freshman at Parsippany Hills High School, Dennis took up wrestling despite being unable to do even a single push-up. However, his frequent involvements in street fights sparked an interest in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he began training at the age of 15. He took on training with an instructor by the name of Jamie Cruz, and Jamie helped Dylan get to his starting point with MMA. Fast forward to post high school and Dylan becomes a full-time student to the game dedicating every little troll bone in his body to fully encapsulating his main character energy as the super troll he's known as today. Dylan, can I get some comments for NFL TV? What, what just happened there? Nothing, no, it's just a little bit, you know, funness. We're good. You good? Yeah, of course. We're good. At just 19 years old, Dylan packed up his bags and moved to the Big Apple to train with one of his idols, Jiu-Jitsu legend Marcelo Garcia. From 2012 to 2015, he dedicated himself to mastering the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, racking up an impressive collection of medals from regional to international tournaments as he worked his way up the belt ranks. In 2014, he earned the ultimate prize, taking home gold in both his weight class and the open weight division at the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation New York competition. Talk about a prodigy on the rise here! Dylan Dennis was truly on fire in 2014, as he demonstrated with his unforgettable performance in Dallas. Not content with simply becoming world champion once or twice, he went for the hat-trick and took home not one, not two, but three gold medals. First, he dominated in his weight class in the G division, and then he added two more golds to his collection in the non-G division. Okay Dylan, we see you. Dennis was in a roll, and it was no surprise when his mentor, Marcelo Garcia, decided to award him the coveted black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. This marked the beginning of Dennis's journey to the top of the sport. And as any Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner knows, earning a black belt is a huge deal. It's the ultimate honor, and Dennis was definitely in the making to be a superstar. As a black belt, Dylan went on to have an incredible record and decided to try and pursue his luck as a professional MMA contender. Dennis ended up partnering up with the one and only Conor McGregor in 2016, and things really started heating up. This was also the year he was invited to join McGregor's camp as a coach and grappling partner. With his skills in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and his ties to one of the biggest names in the UFC, Dennis was about to break into the mainstream scene. Shortly after, Dylan entered Bellator 198 in 2018 against Kyle Walker. Dylan secured his W with a knee bar in the first round and his next opponent wanted a piece of him. Next up was Max Humphrey a year later at Bellator 222, where Dylan secured the armbar submission in under 5 minutes of the opening round at Madison Square Garden. The winner by submission, Dylan Dennis! Brett Okamoto with UFC President Dana White, where immediately after UFC 229, a brilliant lightweight title fight between Habib Nurmagomedov and Conor McGregor. Habib choking him out in the fourth round, but the story real quickly right now is what happened immediately after the fight. So just give me your perspective. You're sitting there watching it. What unfolded as far as you could tell? One of Conor's guys was talking smack to, um, to uh, Habib. Where Dylan really got his first taste of notoriety was during the McGregor-Khabib fight at UFC 229, where after Khabib had defeated Conor to fourth round submission, Dylan was seen taunting him from the sidelines. Khabib jumped into the crowd to attack Dylan and Atlas. 
this sparked a full-fledged brawl. 2019 seemed like the peak of Dylan's rise to fame. He started appearing in numerous interviews and it seemed like he was becoming known as the new bad boy of the sport. Being featured on popular shows such as the MMA Hour with Ariel Helwani, Andrew Schultz's flagrant podcast, and Brennan Schaub's food truck diaries, where after having multiple online callouts with social media star Jake Paul, Jake and his team rolled up on Dennis like a drive-by and proceeded to TP the man like the sh** talker he is. Dylan Dunkin' Donuts Dennis is the biggest talker uh, that there is in, in, in this sport, maybe, maybe besides me. It was initially rumored that Dennis and Jake Paul were on the cusp of fighting. But it was later revealed that Dennis had sustained a knee injury from helping Connor train for his fight against Donald Cerrone. Dylan underwent reconstructive surgery in March 2020. And it appeared that this could have been perceived as the end of this prodigy's fight career. Since then, Dennis has transformed into Super Saiyan troll mode and has since taken his online persona to the next level, calling out former and even current fighters with his banter. Michael Bisping, Nate Diaz, Tommy Fury, and even Patty the Batty to name a few. Dylan also engaged in an ongoing online feud with Ariel Helwani, who was once a friend and supporter of Dylan. In a recent interview on Helwani's show, the tension between the two was palpable, making for an entertaining yet awkward conversation. Helwani went to shake Dennis's hand and he refused to do so because of Jake Paul. Unless you apologize. Shake my hand? Come no, on, after, Doug. after. You're not gonna shake my hand? After. Wow, what yeah. a bitch move. You're after. seriously gonna sit here and after. Not During the interview with Ariel, Dylan was evasive when questioned about a range of topics, including his relationship with Conor McGregor and his reluctance to participate in any future fights. He also claimed to have no current gym and to be training himself, but was unable to provide further details. However, Dylan was insistent on one point. He is making a lot of money. Despite there being no evidence of sponsorship deals on his social media platforms, in summary, Dylan's current situation appears to be shrouded in mystery, and on top of that, he hasn't fought in almost four years. Until now. Well, it was supposed to be until now when YouTuber KSI and Dennis had been scheduled to fight January 14th. Dylan claimed that he was being paid more than any current UFC champion for his upcoming fight at Wembley Arena. How much are you getting paid? I'm not going to say, but it's way more than anybody. Well, tell us the truth. Then it's another lie. I have to put it. No, but once it comes out, then you can see. The internet was abuzz with rumors that the fight might not even happen after Dennis failed to grace us with his presence at the press conference. And lo and behold, Dennis ended up bailing on us completely. Talk about a letdown. KSI let out his frustration in a series of tweets and YouTube videos. And Dennis came back out on Twitter saying fake news and the quickly tweeted again, the truth will shock everyone. We are curious to see what the future holds for Dylan and if his antics will be enough to maintain his relevance. Will he continue to make headlines? Or will he fade into obscurity? Only time will tell. Thanks for tuning in to our discussion about the enigmatic Dylan Dennis. If you enjoyed this brief look at Dylan's career, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more engaging content like this.